right, so I got my Hayabusa donor bike here. Got this thing straight from the hood. It was a pretty good deal, but there's so many little things wrong with it. I just don't have the patience to fix it. We're gonna be pulling the engine out of it. We're not gonna be able to run the stock water pump and a bunch of the stock stuff has to go. But luckily, Schnitz Racing sent me a couple upgrades for this engine, which I'll show you later on. But I guess let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart. Look, I ain't never heard of Hendy before that. So this is the first billet piece I'm gonna be installing. This is an oil cooler delete. Uh, a lot of turbo guys don't even run oil coolers. Well, I should have probably drained the oil first, but oh well. Oh boy. All right, so it does look like we have some kind of aftermarket headers here. I'm thinking if that's why it was running so bad. No, I don't know if that'll do anything though. All right, so I've got a low profile oil breather right there. I'm gonna be replacing that. Yeah. That's single-handedly the nicest part on this engine so far. All right, and we got our water pump lock off here. Like I said, we're gonna need to run an electric water pump because the chain runs downwards. Wow, look at that. Just want to give a huge thanks to Schnitz Racing. If you own a motorcycle or a crotch rocket, do me a favor, check out the link in the description. They carry all kinds of aftermarket motorcycle parts and they also specialize in ECU reflashing for almost any motorcycle out there. So I definitely want to build a long-term relationship with them and you guys can help me with that. So tell them I sent you, check out the link. It's the last bolt holding it all together. Alright guys, so it's been a month since I've last touched this car and I'm sorry for that, but today's video we're going to hopefully get it running. So I got to go through all these engine mounts, weld them, make sure it can hold the 200 pound engine. It's like 180 pounds I think. And then we're going to do some tweaks to the subframe to make sure we can easily pull the engine out and in without dropping the subframe. So that being said guys, let's go ahead and get to the video. All right, so my plan was if I need to take the engine out, I'll just drop the subframe, but the subframe is gonna be pretty heavy. I don't wanna have to do that, so I'm gonna cut out this bar right here and just make it removable to where it ties in these engine mounts. Okay, so basically, if you guys 
haven't noticed, put cardboard washers on each side to give the engine a little bit of squish to get out. This bar right here is what hits the exhaust, so the stock exhaust is not gonna work. Alright guys, so I can't stand wiring. That's why I've kind of postponed this video. But that's where today's sponsor comes in clutch, solder stick. They make an easy way to connect your wires. All you do is put your wires together, apply heat, and you form a solid waterproof connection. Man, and I wish I knew about this sooner because it would have saved me so much time. Comes with a couple different sizes here to choose from. From thicker gauge to thinner gauge. Uh, this completely eliminates the need for a soldering iron or a solder wire and it's super easy and convenient. Just join the two wires together, apply some heat, and boom, it's ready to go. So I had to fix the harness on the Hayabusa, the stator plug burnt up, and man, these things work like a breeze. They're especially handy in tight spaces and emergencies. These things ship to anywhere in the world, and Solder Stick even gives you a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're not satisfied. This is definitely one of the handiest and most clutch sponsors I've ever done. Guys, if you're interested, check the first link in the description. Use my code VASILI20 to get 20% off solder stick. With that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get back to the video. So we got the engine in. We're going to go ahead and drain the oil and pull the oil pan. <clears throat> this is the plastic pickup I'm going to be replacing. So this is a swiveling pickup that uh, I'm going to be installing. Now, yes, I might get some comments that this oil pan is only designed for straight lines. It's not designed for lateral Gs, like drifting. Uh, so I'll definitely have to take it easy. All right, guys, so we got the oil pan installed. So I needed some aluminum tube disconnects and I couldn't find any online so I had to make my own using a handsaw and a lathe. Now this is where a mill would really come into play but I'd only be using the mill like once a month so would that justify me buying one? I don't know. So two hours later I finally finished my first roll cage bunk. Now I'm working on the second one. Got the bar welded back in. It's nice and <laughs> right. So I had this idea at noon. I pulled up to my buddy's place at four, and now it's 9 p.m. and I have these bungs made. So I'm pretty happy with how they came out. They're not perfect, but now we can put this bar on, and then we can uh, weld our engine mounts on.
So now I have to figure out where all this goes. We got it boys, we got crank, but does it have spark though, is the question. All right guys, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing starts. All right, got the battery swapped out, let's try it now. No headers. All right guys, the thing runs. I'm not gonna mess with it more than that because there's no coolant inside. Well guys, I kind of messed up. This was in my gas tank and I think I just clogged up all my injectors. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, I'll worry about that in another video. What I'm probably gonna do is make one long episode and then drive this thing. So it might take a couple weeks, it might take a month. Um, Fingers crossed, hopefully it's sooner, especially with all these holidays right around the corner. Um, you guys, just stay in the loop. Uh, I guess we'll have to see. But with that being said, guys, catch you next one. Stay tuned. Peace and God bless.